Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's continuous coverage of AWS 2021. We're here live, <laughs> real people. And we're pleased to bring you this hybrid event, the most important hybrid event of the year to wrap up really 2021 and kick off next year. We're going to dig into the intersection of machine learning and, and business intelligence. Business intelligence. Itamar Ankorian is here, he's the Senior Vice President of Technology Alliances at Click, and Kosti Vasilikakis is the Head of Product Growth for Low Code, No Code Machine Learning at AWS. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Itamar, David. I think the first time you were on at reInvent, definitely early last decade, <laughs> My life. I had black hair, <laughs> it was maybe uh, 2013 I want to say, so it's, it's been uh, quite a run. It, it, it has and it's definitely been, been a privilege. I had, uh, I had a chance to uh, attend pretty much all, all reInvents from the, the first one uh, with uh, much fewer people and see this growth year over year. And what's uh, just amazing about it is beyond the scale how much it grows the number of people, it's just the pace of innovation keeps, keeps accelerating as, and it's just, just phenomenal. We're lucky that we chose data yeah. as sort of a, our business passion, but um, so speaking of data, what are you hearing from customers about what they want to do with their data and bringing together business intelligence and machine learning, it's being injected in, but what are they telling you that they, that they want, that they need? What's the opportunity that you're hearing? Yeah. So uh, I think first of all, this is a fascinating, fascinating topic because we're talking kind of about the intersection of uh, what everybody wants to look to do is the next frontier of, uh, of data with predictive data, because descriptive analytics have been around for a long time, but what, how can we use predictive analytics, prescriptive analytics to enrich what we've had with descriptive analytics to, in the end of the day, improve the business. And what, what I love talking to people around here and just listening to customers express the, you know, their needs is how can they get more value out of data? So they have the data, they don't use a lot of the data or enough of it, and they want to use it in more ways. And that's what's exciting, to discuss those new ways they want to bring it together. Kost, anything you'd add to that from AWS's Absolutely. perspective? I'll tell you what I, we don't hear from our customers, and we've stopped hearing what is AI and machine learning. And on the contrary, we're hearing how can we make the teams that already AI and ML a lot more productive and make a lot more of it. For example, how can they iterate a lot faster across the ML workflow, how they can train and build really large state-of-the-art natural language processing models like GDP, GPT-3, how can we help customers build, train, and tune customer-specific models mm -hmm. for all their customers to build, to bring in hyper-personalization to their products. And the other thing we're hearing is, how can we help the teams that are not tapping into AI and ML get the most power of it. In a way, how could you actually potentially either democratize the building and development of machine learning models, or how can you, in another way, expose machine learning into applications that analytics users are already using? Yeah, so, you know, when we first met, success was measured in, yeah, I got the Hadoop cluster to work, <laughs> technically, yeah. right? But to your point, they, customers want to get more value out of that data now, and so, they want to operationalize machine intelligence. Is that what active intelligence is? Um, so active intelligence is something that uh, you have hear Click start to talk about, mm -hmm. but we believe it really represents what customers are trying to, to achieve. And the reason we, we use the word active intelligence is if you kind of think about active not being passive. <laughs> so uh, traditional BI uh, kind of relied on pre-configured historical data sets, which were great for what they did, but today they're kind of out of gas in terms of supporting real-time decisioning and action. So what active intelligence is all about is really enabling customers to make it take informed, informed action, not just informed decision, informed action at, at, in the moment, so when that action needs, needs to happen. So in order to accommodate that, Again, this is really the big difference between active and passive, is that active intelligence is all about innovations that bring real-time data. So it's not just historical data, I need real-time data that's relevant to what's happening now. I need a way to create an intelligent data pipeline, an analytics data pipeline, that makes that real-time data available in the form, in the structure that allows me to make a decision or to take action. And finally, it's really need to be designed to drive action. 
right? So whether it's a manual action or whether it's even completely automated, but it's intelligent, it's informed. So that's, that's what active intelligence is, is all about. And by the way, predictive data fits really well into that, that entire paradigm. Right, I mean, we've been talking for years about real time, and it's like, okay, what is real time? Well, real time is before you lose the customer, before you lose the patient, before the machine explodes, <laughs> right? To your point about predictive. Yeah. Now, you guys made an announcement yesterday, uh, ADA, which stands for AI for Data Analytics. What, what's that all about? Well, ADA tries to, aims to address the very point I mentioned before, our customers that are asking us, how can we give access to our business teams, to a lot more business teams to machine learning? And AI for data analytics is a set of partner solutions that are ML powered, and they're focusing across the spectrum of analytics, from data warehousing, business intelligence, business process automation, and other business applications. And the idea is to help our partners bring to our customers a lot of those more ways. And for example, we've built integrations with Click, Tableau, Snowflake, Workato, Pegasystems, and through those, those usually take two flavors. Either we help our partners build ML and embed it into their applications and in a way make them more intelligent, as it are right. mentioned, or we help our partners expose machine learning capability from AWS right within the UI. So for example, yesterday we launched Snowflake integration with SageMaker. Now, Snowflake user can use the same user experience and trigger the same, uh, use the SQL query that they love and trigger an auto ML process in SageMaker right from the same UI and get ML into the same UI. And I'm quite excited to also discuss today about the integration we announced today with Click. SageMaker integration or? Tell us about it. No, no, no other. <laughs> so I think. Um, what a uh, setup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as Kosti mentioned, customers want to create more machine learning. They they want to build faster, new more machine learning capabilities, which is where, by the way, the the uh, no code, low code, you know, comes into mind. How we can use autopilot, which is a SageMaker you know, product for enabling faster creation of models. So they want to create models faster. They also want to be able to use models in a sense monetize them, turn them into value, to make them available to more users where those users are. Uh, so, you know, BI environments or experiences, like as we start to think about them, such as what we provide with Click, again with our Active Intelligence platform, is all about weaving the data into the applications, into the environments, into the analytic workflows that, uh, that users have. So we introduced, and are super excited, uh, we've announced uh, two integrations, so very robust integration between uh, Click Cloud and uh, Amazon SageMaker. And that includes both our new analytic connector for uh, uh, Amazon SageMaker and our integration with Amazon SageMaker Autopilot. So with the integration with SageMaker, we now have ClickSense interacting directly and seamlessly with any model deployed within SageMaker. So again, very much like Kosti mentioned, in your experience as a user, Seamlessly, you now also have predictive, predictive data. So as you work in an application, as you're interacting with your data, dynamically, data is interchanged between Click and SageMaker and reaching your decision making, your actions with predictive data sets. And that's what's so cool about it. So again, the Click environment will bring real-time data in, prepare it for analytics, and then feed that real-time data to SageMaker to get the real-time prediction back in the same experience uh, for the user. So we're really, really excited uh, about that. So translate what that means for customers. Is it that everything happens faster? Does it unlock new capabilities? Can we unpack that a little bit? Absolutely, so we're in a way bridging the chasm between the data science world and the business teams. So the data science teams are building machine learning models to make predictions. And now, with the first integration that Mara mentioned, we actually expose those machine learning models in an application that the business team uses, Click. And with the same dashboards that they are very familiar with, can now trigger those machine learning models and get real-time predictions in the dashboards themselves powered by machine learning. So in a way, this chasm between the two worlds of data science and business users is completely bridged. And the second uh, integration we built with Autopilot helps data engineers use 
completely their own machine learning technology powered by AWS SageMaker. So a data engineer is creating different pipelines, and through those pipelines, they can now, with a building block, add auto ML capabilities in that pipeline without them really knowing machine learning. So it, we bridge the gap of the business teams getting access to the data science teams, and also bringing that uh, skill set gap for the data engineers to tap into machine learning. You, you mentioned monet monetization before, so this to me is key. Because who's going to be doing the monetization? It's the business lines that exactly. are going to do that. Not the data scientists, data, they're going to enable that. But ultimately it's those data consumers exactly. that are building those, I call them data products, that they can ultimately monetize. And that's, yeah. I'm interested in low code, no code, because yeah. it's in your title too. So that all plays in, doesn't it? It does, it does. And we're heavily invested into the whole space. So for example, today, we just launched SageMaker Canvas that is a low code, no code capability for analysts and business users. But we realize we don't need to only innovate on the technology side, we need to also innovate on the partnerships that we built. And those integrations help expose those our technology to wherever our customers want to be. They want to be in click, so be it. Let them use the machine learning technology that we are innovating on exactly where they, they want it to be. Itamar, can you give us some customer examples, use cases, maybe make it real for us? Uh, yeah, for, for sure, and I, and I think as you, as you think about these use cases, one of the other things I wanted to kind of envision is the fact that all this predictive data and all this integration that we're talking about is not, can actually express itself in a lot of different experiences for the user. It can be a dashboard, it can also be conversational analytics, which is part of what we offer in Click Cloud. So you can actually, you know, you can write and interact with the data. You don't have to actually look at it. It can be alerts that actually look automatically and inform you that you need to take action. So you don't actually look at it. it the, the data will come to you when it when it needs you, including based on on predictive data. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of options about how you're going to do it. And give me, let me give you let me give an example. I'll, let me try and maybe pick one that is uh, intuitive. I think for for many for many people sales, right? So, we have sales, you have a lot of orders, you want to try to, to, close, uh, to close in a quarter, you have a forecast, the deals you expect to close, uh, and then you can use machine learning, for example, to forecast or to try to project which, which deals you're going to lose. So now, again, that can look at a lot of different aspects of the deal, the timing, the, vo the, the volume, the uh, amounts, a lot of other parameters, right? And predict where, uh, if you're going to lose a deal. So now if there's a deal that, I, that my salesperson is telling me he's going to win, but the model is telling me he may lose, well, I probably want to double click on the debt one, right? <laughs> so I cannot bring that information, right, in a, again, in the moment, either to the seller or to the management, so they can identify it and take action. Now not only can I bring it to them, but I can also, you know, from the machine learning, you know, what is the likely reason that they lose? And if I know the likely reason, it also becomes prescriptive. I now can know what to do to try and fix it, right? So I can either do it, again, manually, or I can also integrate it. Uh, again, you know, in Click Cloud, we also, also click uh, application automation, which is, again, also a kind of a low-code, no-code environment to orchestrate processes. I can now take that and automatically also update back Salesforce or the CRM Okay, so the, the order management system gets updated. So again, it's an example, exactly an example of active intelligence. It allows me to take informed action in the now, in the moment, about uh, making the better example. Business. And a, right. if a salesperson, maybe I prioritize, and the machine's helping me, you know, direct my resources. Is this available today? Is it in general availability? Available right now. Right today, now. Anyone can go start it right now on Click Cloud. Great, awesome. Congratulations. Um, last question. So, what's the future hold for this partnership? Where are you guys headed? Give us a little. Well, first of all, we'd love to scale those integrations, so if you're a customer of Click, please go ahead and test them and do share the feedback. And second for us, we really want to learn from our customers and improve those integrations we, we bring to them. We really want to hear what technologies they want to expose to a lot more users, and we are aspiring to build that partnership and get a lot more tight aligned with, uh, with Click to do that. And uh, th thank you, Kosti. And uh, we, we see tremendous additional opportunities. I, I think uh, Amazon tells it, we're, we're always says we're, we're in day one. That, that's how we kind of feel about it. There's already so much we put into it, but the market is so dynamic. There's so many new needs that are coming up. So we kind of think about it that way. So first of all, we're on a journey to expand Click Cloud, adding more services. It's actually a platform where we bring both data services, data integration, data management, 
everything related to the analytic pipeline and of course the analytic services. So it all right. comes together in one environment that makes it more agile, faster to build these, these new modern active intelligence type experiences. Uh, so as we do that, we're going to be adding more services, creating more opportunities to integrate with more services from the AWS side. So we're really excited to look at that. And just like Kosti mentioned with Canvas, you know, Amazon keeps coming up with new, new uh, services and new capabilities. So there's going to be a lot of more opportunity. Uh, we're going to keep, uh, again, with a spirit of our partnership where we want to you know, jump first, innovate quickly, and uh, you know, create this integration, add value to customers. Hop on the flywheel, that's, I love it. Uh, great, great to have you guys, awesome to reconnect. Thanks for having us. All right, appreciate great it. See you again. Thanks, All right, Dave. thank you for watching. This is theCUBE, and we're covering AWS reInvent 2021. We're the leader in high tech coverage. Right back.